Jim Hoffman here, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. And it is Wednesday, time for our daily devotion. So I am on our Facebook page and just settling in, getting ready to host this. So come and join if you would, please. We'd love to have you as part of our devotion time. As you join, there's a comment section on the left-hand side. Feel free to leave a quick comment. Let me know you're present. Would love to say good morning to you as you do that. Hi, Jack and Pat. Good morning to both of you. Just watching, see who leaves comments. Good morning, Linda. How are you today? Let's see, you are listening while you dust. <laughs> Multitasking. Again, as you get here, leave a quick comment. Let me know you're present, like Stacy Fisher just did. Good morning, Stacy. Glad you're here. Hi, Barbara. Good morning to you. We're going to be reading out of Matthew chapter 4, so if you want to find Matthew chapter 4, that would be great. Matthew chapter 4. Hi Susan, good morning to you. Glad you're here. Happy Wednesday to you. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Chris. Good morning to both of you. Good morning, Jack. Glad you're here. No, it's not a lollipop, by the way. I was just I was thinking, I'm, I see this on the screen. It is not a wally, lollipop. It's a little wooden mallet. I'll explain here in a second. Matthew chapter 4, by the way. That's where we're going to be reading. Hey, hey, <laughs> on a summer's day. Yes, you know, when you open up the back door at 7.30 in the morning and you just close it real quick because it's already steamy outside. So as if summer just, boom, came all of a sudden. So one of my last uh, classes that I had in my D-Men project, or D-Men course, uh, was taught by a guy by the name of Michael Koppel. It was on leadership and care, and he always began each day ringing a little chime, taking a couple moments to be silent. I saw that on my desk and thought, oh, that'd be neat to ring a little chime as we begin our time. Let's read our prayer of illumination. Oh God, by your spoken word, you created everything that is. By your incarnate word, you redeemed us. By your comforting word, you are with us still. So may your spirit prepare us now to hear your word to us this day. Breathe in. Breathe out. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 to 11. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted forty days and forty nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the tempter took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and 
On their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the tempter took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only God. Then the tempter left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. Our devotion writer is Marilyn Dorn from Virginia. Her focus verse is verse 4. Jesus answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And here is the devotion that Marilyn writes for us today. The COVID-19 pandemic filled me with anxiety. The waiting and disruption of normal life made me think of the time when my friend Jane, a hairstylist, injured both hands and became unable to work. In addition to not earning money, Jane couldn't cook or clean or do much of anything else. Her sons helped around the house, but Jane's doctors told her she would have to wait and see if her hands would heal. Jane didn't know what to do, so she started spending hours each day praying and reading scripture. After about two years, her hands did heal, and she was able to return to work. Jane didn't know how long she would have to wait for healing. Similarly, as I write this, we don't know how long it will be before our lives can return to normal. And as we ponder Jesus' wilderness experience, it occurs to me that the Bible doesn't say whether Jesus knew how long he would have to endure his time of temptation. Did he also experience the anxiety of the unknown? The one thing we do know is that God is with us now and always. And like Jane, we can pray and read scripture. My prayers may be as much complaint and lament as gratitude and joy, but communicating with God and meditating on God's word always gives me hope. So the thought for the day, talking with God and reading the Bible helped me get through the day. You know, in the last year and almost a half, and a half that we have been doing daily devotions, it seems like an awful lot of our time together, an awful lot of our devotions together, have been about this. They've been about anxiety. They have been about disruption to our normal life. They have been about patiently waiting. They have been about reading and also about um, other things like that. And so, um, you know, it's a, I think it's a good reminder because... Um, you know, we need to hear that message over and over again. We need to hear the um, words of God that come to us and, and remind us that God is present with us. We need to be people who continually look at the words of God and, and let them filter into our hearts and minds. And we need to be people who are praying about what's going on in our world. Consistent, constant prayer. Uh, being people who are ones who are um, thinking about how we might not only stay in love with God, but also thinking about how we might be people who are sharing the love of God with others around us. If people of God are anxious people, then you know, the question becomes, you know, how do we communicate faith to the world around us? How do we communicate our faith to the world around us? If we have little confidence, I mean, it's in some ways, when you think about anxiety, it shows some kind of lack of confidence in, in, um, in some way. And so I want to encourage us to be people who think about um, our anxiety and the expression of it. It's a normal part of who we are, but how do we balance that with the confidence that we also express in God who is with us and God who loves us? And so think about the ways in which you talk about and read and listen and pray and, and how you communicate to the world around you that, that, yes, we can all be concerned about what's going on, but we also believe that God 
has a hand in all that's going on and that God is working things out for the good for those who love God. So let's take a moment to pause and pray. Dear God, thank you for being with us in the wilderness. Help us to keep in touch with you and to share your love with others. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for being here today. I noticed that we have somebody in our comment section. I'll address those uh, so you don't need to worry about those. Um, but please, um, thank you very much for being here today. I appreciate all of you um, being a part of our devotion time. And I hope that you'll come and join again tomorrow at this time for our devotions. We'll be back on for our regular time. God's grace and peace be with you on this beautiful Wednesday. And I will look forward to spending time in devotion with you tomorrow. Thanks, friends.